Power Rangers as a franchise has been going strong for three decades now, closing out its 30th season just a few months ago on Netflix with Power Rangers Cosmic Fury. And as far as we can tell, all signs point to this being the final season of the initial iteration of Power Rangers here in America that we've all viewed over the last 30 years. Now with all the different eras that have come and gone, there have been different generations that grew up with different series of the show. So today, I want to discuss my top 10 favorite villains from the first decade of Power Rangers, which is the decade I grew up with. So that's 1993's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers up to 2004's Dino Thunder. So here's my list. Let's get started. Number 10, Rita Repulsa. The first villain that started it all. Rita was the very first villain that the first team of Power Rangers had to face in the first series, 1993's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Rita was a force to be reckoned with in that first season of the show, particularly when she abducted and brainwashed Tommy Oliver, thus creating the evil Green Ranger, and when she summoned the evil sorcerer Lokar while operating from her headquarters on the moon. Now in later appearances, she would be reduced to mere comic relief, but in the first year, she definitely left her mark. Number 9. The Evil Green Ranger Yes, I know he only stays a villain for a short arc before becoming good, but nevertheless, he was introduced as a villain, and when he ran up on the Power Rangers, they never saw it coming, and he fucked them up several times before they were able to gain the upper hand. So he's deserving of this list for sure. Number 8. Rancic Rancic was the main villain of Power Rangers Time Force. Now in the year 3000, children are born in labs where parents can select specific genetic traits for them. As a result of a lab accident gone wrong, a vial of embryonic biomass leaked into the sewer system below and combined with the toxic waste down there, causing the contents to mutate into a fully grown man. He quickly gained full intelligence and started going by the name Rancic. His intelligence likely came through his DNA from his human lineage, but it's never specifically stated. He eventually formed an underground army of wayward mutants. Now I won't go into too much detail of his story, let's just say he was granted immense power from creatures called orgs, and was able to pull out a bone from his body that formed into a sword. That is fucking badass. After committing unspeakable crimes, he is caught and sentenced to death by the Time Force. But he escapes, kills the first Time Force Red Ranger, and travels back in time a thousand years to the year 2001 to wipe out the human race while the Time Force Rangers follow and attempt to stop him. He eventually sees the error of his ways at the end of the series, but throughout, he was a major threat to the Rangers. Number 7. Ecliptor Ecliptor was the secondary antagonist in Power Rangers in Space, serving as Astronomer's second in command. This guy is one of the coolest villains in all of Power Rangers. Just look at his design. It's so sick. He raised Astronomer since she was a child and serves as her protective parental figure. He was also the first villain in the entire series to actually have layered character development, even coming off as sympathetic at times. When he discovered the familial ties that Red Ranger Andros had to Astronema, he even went out of his way to help him and the other Space Rangers escape capture from Dark Spectre and Dark Honda twice in the latter half of the series. He's eventually deemed a traitor to the United Alliance of Evil and is brainwashed to be even more malevolent than he was before completely stripping away any sympathetic traits that he possessed before. He's ultimately turned to dust after being hit with Zordon's purity wave, but throughout the series, he was someone you did not want to tangle with. Number 6. Lord Zed In the first episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 2, Rita Repulsa is replaced by Lord Zed, the Lord of Darkness who served as her boss and apparently sent her to our galaxy a millennia ago to conquer it, which she failed to do. 
Apparently, being informed that she was losing to a team of high school teenagers on a continuous basis was the last straw, and he removes her from her post and takes her place as the ranger's main villain, sending her back into space in her original space dumpster. And Lord Zed was not adapted from the Super Sentai source material and was specifically created to be the villain of the second season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers here in America. And for the first half of it, he was a goddamn badass. He had stronger putty patrollers, had a dark ass theme song, could turn a fucking snake into a staff, gave Goldar back his wings, could make stronger monsters and would enlarge them by bombing their fucking asses, had a devious voice provided by the excellent Robert Axelrod that could stand up to that of Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget, destroyed the Rangers' dinosaurs straight out of the fucking gate as his first task, has a smoke-filled throne room inside an insidious stone-cold castle on the moon, and is the master of fucking Serpentera, the Dragonzord of Destruction. Zed was one of the best villains in all of Power Rangers history, and the only reason that he's not up higher on my list is because he was toned down quite a bit in the second half of the second season, and by the time season 3 came around, he, like Rita, had been reduced to mere comic relief, and it would remain that way until he returned more recently in Power Rangers Dino Fury, and more prominently in this year's Cosmic Fury. He was back to the personality of the early Mighty Morphin Season 2 Zed, for the most part. The underlings he allies himself with, uh, the mother-daughter duo of Squid Ink, I believe it is, they're so fucking insufferable and every time Zed has to interact with them in a scene, he slightly drifts back into that Al Bundy territory from later Mighty Morphin and Zeo. Not fully, but a little bit of it comes out now and then. Overall though, he's still Lord Zed, and Zed is fucking awesome. Number 5. Deviat Deviat was the third and final general of Scorpius and later Trakina, but betrayed them as he had his own agenda. Though he frequently pretended to be sophisticated and polite, even in battle, in reality, that demeanor was adopted as a facade to mask the fact that he was truly a psychopathic, traitorous, sadistic, and self-serving monster who only desired absolute power and would do whatever it took to obtain it, even if it meant allowing himself to be allied with whomever could offer him protection at that time until he ultimately saw the opportunity to betray them. He stole the Galaxy Book and plunged the Rangers and all of the Terra Venture colony into the Lost Galaxy, where they were trapped, helpless, and had to fend for themselves. He was responsible for Scorpius' death and had tried to kill Trakina, later accidentally fusing with her in order to save himself after being exposed. Number 4. Frax Frax was a cyborg who served as the secondary antagonist of Power Rangers Time Force. He was once known as Dr. Louis Ferrix, a human scientist from the year 3000 who was a technical genius. He created both the Psychobot technology and later a cure for the poison that Venomark intended to kill Ranzig with. But secretly, he was carrying out experiments in genetics, toxinology, and synthetic life. He showed kindness towards Ranzig, but in return, he blew up his lab with him still inside, attempting to kill him and stole most of his technology and serum. However, unbeknownst to Rancic, Ferrix uh, survived the explosion but was severely injured. He, he saw only one chance of survival and utilized the remaining technology that Rancic didn't take that was still left in his lab to rebuild his entire body into a robot, becoming Frax. Now it's never exactly revealed how Frax later joins forces with Rancic, so I don't know. But, on the outside, he was seemingly a loyal servant to him. He even called him Master. But in reality, he harbored deep resentment against him for the things he did, and swore that one day he would get his revenge. He eventually did, but after some time, Rancic captures him and he gets the astronomer treatment from Power Rangers in space. And ultimately, it didn't end well for him. Number 3. Trakina Trakina is the daughter of Scorpius and successor. Trakina probably has the best character development of a villain in Power Rangers, 
I mean, Ecliptor had some good ones too, but that's particularly why I put her higher on the list. Now, during the first half of Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, Trakina came off as more of a pretentious princess. She had no interest in her father's conquest and had no intentions of ever showing her face on the battlefield for more than a quick quip before making her exit. Scorpius eventually tells her she must enter some kind of cocoon and evolve into a full insect and shed her human half, but she's too preoccupied with her beauty and isn't willing to trade that for power. But at the halfway point of the series, all that changes. After her father's third general, Deviat, sets him up to be killed by the Power Rangers, she steps up to be his successor and trains to learn how to fight and become physically stronger with enhanced endurance. She's then able to hold her own in her battles against the Power Rangers. Towards the end of the series, she would enter the cocoon while fighting Deviat and the two of them would accidentally fuse together, making her the predominant host and stronger than ever, until she was taken down by Leo in the series finale. Number 2 Darkonda Darkonda was a psychotic agent in the service of the United Alliance of Evil and is one of my favorite Power Ranger villains ever. As a bounty hunter for hire, he kidnapped Andros' little sister Corone as a small child and brought her to Dark Spectre, leader of the UAE, to be groomed into the Empress of Evil, Astronema. He had an ongoing rivalry with Ecliptor, who never trusted him, and for good reason. He's died several times, only to be resurrected through some means or another, and seemed to possess a total of nine lives. After making a power grab at every opportunity afforded to him, he finally sealed his fate when he sacrificed his final life to try and destroy UAE leader, Dark Spectre, with a Quantron battlecruiser to take his place as the head of the organization. But upon impact, he was crushed by Dark Spectre, thus killing them both. And, number one, the Psycho Rangers. The Psycho Rangers were created by Astronema using key cards obtained on the planet Onyx. They were powered directly by Dark Spectre's own power and were ruthless, homicidal counterparts to the Space Rangers and later the Lost Galaxy Rangers. Literally, these guys are no joke. They're like fucking Power Ranger Terminators programmed for one sole purpose to completely annihilate their targets. Each Psycho Ranger had a specific fighting style, unbeatable by the Ranger they were evil versions of. The Psycho Rangers consisted of the blue, yellow, pink, black, and red Psycho Rangers, with Psycho Red as their leader. They were used by Astronema not only to defeat the Power Rangers, but also to severely weaken Dark Spectre, whom she wished to overthrow and more than likely this contributed to why Dark Honda was able to take him down so easily. Now, as the storyline unfolded, it was revealed that they also had monster forms as well as their ranger forms, reverting to their more explicit monster state when their ranger forms were destroyed. After the space rangers were able to destroy their monster forms, they returned in spectral form within Astronomer's secret city. The space rangers managed to digitize them once again, preserving them in several key cards. Now, in the following season, Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, these cards found their way into the hands of Deviat, who revived the Psycho Rangers and enhanced their strength. He then sent them after the Galaxy Rangers, but Space Ranger Andros learned of their return and he along with the rest of the Space Rangers teamed up with the Lost Galaxy Rangers to destroy them once and for all. However, Psycho Pink would return one last time and the Pink Galaxy Ranger would have to sacrifice herself to finish her off for good. Now, there is yet to be, and likely never will be, villains as bloodthirsty as the fucking Psycho Rangers in the franchise ever again. And in my humble opinion, they earned their spot at the top of my list. And that's my list of my top 10 favorite Power Rangers villains from the franchise. What do you all think of this list? Do you agree or disagree with it? Ah, uh, the decade of Power Rangers that I grew up with, this is my list, so I'm going by that. But I'm curious, what era of Power Rangers did you all grow up with, and what are your top 10 favorite villains from the franchise? Leave a comment below and let me know. I'd like to take the time to thank my editor, and to thank you all for your time as well. I sincerely appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed this list, and if you're interested in this kind of content, please like and subscribe and click the bell. 
And if you'd like to help support my work and my channel through donations, you may donate through my PayPal link below. Until next time folks, have a good day, be safe, and take care. Goodbye.